Hello everyone, thank you for joining this presentation. My name is Mojtaba Zahiri and this presentation is about liquidator, liquid resource attacks and countermeasures. A research I've done with my advisor in New Jersey Institute of Technology, Professor Reza Kortmola. Resource sharing services are popular in today's world. Examples of resources that can be shared in these services are images, videos, audio files, or social media posts. Resource sharing services allow users to upload files and then privately share them with other users such as their friends, followers, or subscribers, or even make them public. Many of these services rely on cookies for user authentication and authorization. When a request is made to these services from a different website, they are called cross-site, and cookies sent with these cross-site requests are called third-party cookies. The resources shared in sharing services can also be embedded in other websites, in this example an image. Other websites access these resources through cross-site requests. Users usually put some important pieces of information in these services that are privacy sensitive, such as their identity, social circle, location, interest, political application, religion, race, and gender. Users do not want this type of private information to be leaked outside the sharing service. Normally, users would like to keep their personal information private when they are surfing the web and visiting different websites. Also, users tend to avoid real-world consequences for their activities on the web. For example, an anonymous critic of a government wouldn't like her identity be revealed. Therefore, users are interested in keeping their identity anonymous on the web. In general, this paper is about addressing targeted deanonymization attacks and privacy leakages in the context of sharing services. I first review the attack scenarios and then review some motivating examples. After getting familiar with the context, I explain the threat model and then I explain our contributions, including the new attack variants and also Liquidator as the first client-side solution. Leaky resources lead to targeted deionization on the web and were introduced first in the context of image sharing services. Let's assume both attacker and victim have an account on Google Photos service. Attacker privately shares an image in Google Photos service with the targeted victim. This image is only accessible to attacker and the victim and the authorization is checked through cookies. Any attempts by other users to access this image does not succeed because they don't have the appropriate cookies and permissions. We call the URL pointing to this leaky image and a state dependent URL or ST URL because the response is different depending on the user's state on the sharing service. When the victim attempts to retrieve the image, the response includes the image. When someone other than the victim attempts to retrieve the image, the response is different, either contains an authentication error or points to an error web page. Here I explain the attack setups that leads to targeted deionization because attackers can learn the identity of the users loading the attacker-controlled web pages. Attacker prepares an attack page in her own website. The attack page embeds an image hosted on an image sharing service, Google Photos service in this example. And here is the targeted user using a personal computer to surf on the internet. In the first step, the user's browser makes a request to the attacker domain to load the attacker-controlled web page. In second step, the attacker's server responds with this attack page and the web page is rendered in the user's browser. Third step, when rendering the web page, the browser makes a request to the CURL with the user cookies attached to retrieve the embedded leaky image from Google Photos. The Google Photos service looks at the request and the cookies checks to see if the user is authorized to access the image and then sends a response. If this is the targeted victim, the response contains the shared image, and if not, it will contain an error message. Normally, the result of loading the image is not known to the attacker, because the response to a cross-site request is not accessible to the attacker. However, there are known cross-site leaks that allow the attacker to learn the result of loading the image. This difference can be communicated to the attacker servers using a cross-site leak method. Based on this difference, the attacker can learn whether the current user visiting the attack page is the targeted victim, and hence deanonymize the victim. The methods used to learn these kinds of private information communicated to the attacker is called cross-site leak or XS leak. There are two other variants of the attack. First variant efficiently extends the attack from identifying one victim to identifying n victims. The straightforward method to extend the attack is to share n resources with the n victims and embed in these resources in the attack page. However, this is not scalable, and there is a clever method to scale the attack to n users by only sharing log of n resources. 
The bit vector mapping shown in the table is an example on how to use only two resources for identifying three victims. So we have seen that by sharing log of n resources, we can target up to n users. Another attack scenario seeks to link multiple identities a single individual has in different sharing services. For example, attacker embeds links to resources shared with the victim in OneDrive and Google Drive, and if both successfully load in the attack page, the attacker learned that both OneDrive and Google Drive accounts belong to the same person. We now describe the anonymization scenarios that leverage leaky resource attacks. <laughs> law enforcement. Given a target suspect, law enforcement agencies can use this attack to learn if the suspect is visiting a specific website. Also, they can use this attack to link an anonymous account in one resource sharing service to a non-user account in another resource sharing service, hence de-anonymizing the suspect. For example, FBI employed network investigative techniques with similar de-anonymization goals since at least 2002. Sensitive websites, discreet or extramarital affairs, users of pornography websites, and sex extortion are targets for this attack, as users tend to keep their identities anonymous in these situations. For example, FBI booby trapped a video to catch a suspected torture child sextortionist via Dropbox. Journalism and critics. Leaky resource attack can reveal the identities of anonymous government critics by targeting their social media accounts. For example, when a target critic visits an attack web page with links to leaky resources for a list of candidate accounts, a successful request to one of the links will let the attacker learn which candidate account belongs to this anonymous critic. Another way to de-anonymize such critics is to use the account leaking strategy, trying to link the target, the, uh, target anonymous account to a noun account. As an example, the U.S. government demanded that Twitter release information to identify an account holder whose tweets have been critical of the Trump administration's immigration policies. Blind peer review. Academic conferences and journals rely on a blind peer review process in which the identity of the reviewers is hidden from the authors. Using the, this attack and starting with the list of program committee members or editorial board, the authors of an article can mount a series of attacks that lead to learning the identity of the article reviewers. Insurance coverage. Insurance companies can use information about the website visited by users to find their concerns about the specific disease, thus affecting the company's decisions about the coverage and premium. In the third model, we assume the attacker and the victim are users of the same resource sharing service. The resource sharing service allows its users to share resources privately with each other and authenticate users through cookies. The attacker convinces the victim to visit the attack page, which is controlled by the attacker, while the victim is logged into her account with the resource sharing service, which is not controlled by the attacker. The attacker can determine if the victim loaded the resources successfully by a cross-site leak. The attack is effective because the requirements, these requirements can be achieved in multiple ways and are within easy reach of the attacker. For requirement 1, resource sharing services are very popular, so the victim may have an account. Although many such services have free membership and the attacker can just create an account. For requirement 2, these are the de facto mechanisms for many resource sharing services. Some popular services, such as Google Drive, even offer the option to not notify the target users when a file is shared with them. Requirement 3 can be achieved in multiple ways, including via phishing emails or via a button hole approach. It is common for many users to be logged into popular services while surfing the net. Requirement 4 is crucial for the attack and can be achieved via a cross-site leak. As explained in prior slides, this attack scenario was first introduced in context of image sharing services. During our experiments, we realized that this attack can be done with other file types as well, such as video files and audio files, hence we generically call them leaky resource attacks instead of leaky images. We found three new variants of these types of attacks. We show that the attacks can be implemented more reliably by using two other HTML tags, and so expand the attack to a broader range of browsers and sharing services. Finally, we propose a countermeasure to leaky resource attacks, called Liquidator, as the first client-side defense to these attacks. We experimentally showed that the defense introduces a small overhead and minimally impacts the user experience. First, a bit of background. The leaky images attacks were introduced by an script-based and a script-less cross-site leak method. 
This JavaScript-based method relies on unload and unerror events. When the attack page renders in the browser, it makes a request to the leaky image. If response is successful, the unload event triggers, and the request is made to the attacker server to notify the attacker that this is the targeted victim. If response is not successful, the unerror event triggers, and the attacker server is notified that this is not the targeted victim. However, privacy-conscious users may use tools that completely disable or limit JavaScript in browsers, such as NoScript or Chrome Zero extensions. In this situation, the attacker is limited to a scriptless cross-site leak methods. To perform the attack without using a script, attacker can simulate an if-then-else control flow in pure HTML using object tag fallback. In the example provided in this slide, the outer object tag points to the state-dependent URL, if the request to this SD URL fails, the inner object HTML tag will be rendered and notify the attacker that this is not the targeted victim. Otherwise, the attacker will not receive this notification and hence learns that the current user loading the attack page is the targeted victim. But the object tag fallback has some limitations. Our experiments show that it's not reliable across different browsers and sharing services. Also, X-Frame options header can be set in the response and so the browser doesn't render the response, the resource. The focus of our research is on scriptless methods because they can be used even against privacy-conscious users that limit or disable JavaScript in their browsers. We first examined various HTML tags and among them we found video and audio HTML tags with similar fallback properties. These tags accept multiple source elements and these source elements simulate if then else statements. If the request made by first source element is not successful, the second source element will be rendered. These HTML tags are not subject to limitations of object HTML tag. Our experiments reveal that these tags are more reliable across different browsers and resource sharing services, and also are not affected by the X-Frame option header. We found 17 popular resource sharing services that are vulnerable to leaky resource attacks. In this table, some of the resource sharing services are anonymized as we are still working with these services to perform responsible disclosures. We have general Cloud storage services, photo sharing services, source code management services, web hosting services, and others. E, F, and C in the table represent Edge, Firefox, and Chrome browsers respectively. As can be seen in the table, the non-object tag-based method is not much reliable in different services and browsers, but the attacks based on newly found video and audio HTML tags are more reliable in different browsers and sharing services. Here is a summary of the results. As can be seen in the summary, more resource sharing services are vulnerable when using audio and video for uh, HTML tags compared to using the previously known object tag. Second variant of the attack includes integrators. Integrators of sharing services can add extra features that are not available in the sharing service itself. For example, a website can manage resources from multiple cloud accounts in one place by integrating with multiple cloud services. As another example, an automated software testing or delivery service can integrate with source code hosting services. A common property of integrator services is that they often offer access to the resources shared in the sharing service through different URLs on the integrator's domain. If such URLs exhibit the state-dependent property, we refer to them as mediated as URLs. Here is an example where the resource shared in sharing X service can also be accessed through a mediated as URL in the integrator service. The issue with mediated as URLs is that even if the sharing service itself fixes the leaky resource attacks, the problem may persist through the integrator services because they may not follow the same security practices. During our experiments, we were able to find mediated SURLs in Buddy, which is a continuous integration system for software development, integrating with GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket services. In the third variant, we show how it's possible to perform the attack without even the victim interacting with the attack page. The attacker's goal is to link two account IDs. In the example in this slide, uh, in, uh, one for Google Drive and one for Slack. If the attacker knows the real identity behind one of these IDs, she can then dynamize the other account ID. Similar to a typical res leaky resource attack, the attacker shares the resource privately with the victim in Google Drive. The attacker then uses the Google Drive integration in Slack to send these shared resources to a set of targeted Slack users, for example, by attaching the resource to a message to the sh targeted users. The Google Drive button, the attacker's Slack message box will prompt to give permission to all the targeted Slack users, except for one. 
that one user already has permission to access the resource, and the attacker will be able to successfully link the victim's Google Drive and Slack account IDs without even interacting with the, with the victim. After introducing these three new variants, we perform a responsible disclosure to affect the services and the responses are categorized in two groups. First group are services that consider it a privacy concern and are actively looking for feasible solutions. For example, Google confirmed the issue placing it in the category of excess search attacks and is following three directions. Auditing vulnerable endpoints, experimenting with different defenses and working with web browsers to find defenses. Also another service acknowledged the issue, the vulnerability and issue a bug bounty. The second group are services that consider it as an acceptable risk. For example, Microsoft's response suggests that this is an acceptable risk, risk for its OneDrive and Skype products, as their main focus is to ensure the integrity, availability, and confidentiality of these services. All right, so how do we mitigate the attack? A defense against leaky resource attacks should have these three security objectives. Prevent leaky resource attacks, allow end users to control their privacy level, and limit the impact on existing web functionality. For example, it should be compatible with services that may serve legitimate purposes, such as tracking, analytic advertisement, and single sign-on. We propose Liquidator. It's the first client-side defense that can be deployed right away without going from browser vendors and website owners. The defense applies a set of steps to each request made by the browser when loading a web page. First, the defense identifies a request as potentially suspicious if the request contains cookies and is cross-origin. The next step is to remove the cookies from the request and send a modified request. The response to this request will be rendered by the browser in the web page. The defense then makes a second request identical to the first request, this time with the cookies. The response to these two requests are compared, and if any observable differences are detected, the request is deemed dangerous. The second request that contains the cookies ensures that the tracking and analytics services remain unaffected. We have implemented Liquidator as an extension to Chrome, Edge, and Brave browsers. Liquidator may run in two modes, exact and relaxed, based on how strict the criteria is for comparing the source and target origins of a request. The second request initiated by Liquidator can be implemented as a head request, which is identical to a GET request, except that the server only returns the headers in the response. Whenever a dangerous request is detected by Liquidator, the user gets a small notification in the extension icon on the browser toolbar and has the opportunity to make a decision. We evaluated the impact of our defense on the user experience by quantifying Liquidator's overhead. We used the Alexa Top 15 English websites for the evaluation. We first evaluated the impact on the web page load time. Baseline is the normal load time of websites without Liquidator. The two orders are when Liquidator is installed in Relax or Exact mode. Exact makes more strict checks and Relax makes more lax checks. Majority of websites had less than 200 millisecond extra load time. We then evaluated the number of requests by, made by the browser to, the, to load the web page. For the majority of websites, the presence of the extension has minimal impact, adding less than 6% additional requests. This figure compares the amount of data transferred when loading a web page. It shows that the defense impacts website differently. The amount increases for Yahoo, but not for Amazon and Microsoft. This shows Liquidator's impact depends on the specifics of the third-party requests. In conclusion, our experiments show leaky resource attacks are still possible and can become more reliable and be used in a wider range of browsers and sharing services. We propose Liquidator. It's the first client-side defense that can be deployed right away without buying from browser vendors and website owners. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready for your questions.